course. It's a LiDAR course. Um, it is called Orchidia Bluffs. And, you know, pretty much lined it all out, brought it on in. Um, and chose my theme, you know, so I can have my water here. Um, you know, if you look at the course, we've got... Change this. Get rid of that. And I'm going to open up display chat. All right. There we go. So here's the course. This is an open street. Here's Google Maps or Blue Map. Okay. So it's right on the ocean. And, you know, I always use. Blue Golf to get the whole layout. Hopefully your course will be on there so you can figure out, you know, which ones are whole one. Unless you've played the course before, you're not going to know, right? So uh, Blue Golf's a great resource to figure out which hole is what and where you can start, okay? But I figured since I'm doing my own course, critiquing everybody else's course, saying you need to change this, do that, and everything else. Figured I'd take the opportunity to tear my course apart. Um, so what I've done so far, obviously, I splined it all out. Um, and it's pretty much other than spinning this course 180 degrees. So it matched up with the water over here for hole 12 and 13. Because when I originally brought it in, hole one was over here. So that was no good. So I had to split it apart. I had to, and uh, you know, I started working on it. So I had to split the terrain, which you don't know how to do all that stuff. I just did a tutorial on how to do that. In other words, if you go and uh, contour the stuff in TGC 2019 here, uh, you know, and you make changes to anything regarding the elevation of the ground, whether it's flattening uh, cart paths or deepening bunkers or contouring fairways, any changes like that, you're going to lose them unless you split the contouring. And again, check out that other video. Um, it'll show you how to keep all your changes intact and re-import uh, your open street data. So, here we go. So this is my course. And what I'm going to start doing is going along. I did import trees. All right. In Chad's tool. So a lot of times. Um, hole one, for example, had trees in the middle of the fairway. You know, so the LIDAR data thought others. Oh, there must have been something there in Open Street. And. It thought it was a tree and put trees in the fairway. Well, obviously, there's not trees in the fairway. There was a tree blocking this tee. I had to remove that. Okay, and that's about as far as I got. And I said, you know what? Let's just stream this. So, again, like tee boxes, uh, you look here. I'm always complaining about them. See how it chamfers down here? So I'm going to, you know, clean that up. And let's see what we got here. Okay. You know, so get it, you know, as flat as possible. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat. Because you can already see, you know, as I'm doing that, it's lifting the cart path up over here, right? So that, what I normally do is I'll go around the entire course and do the tee boxes, okay? That one was done already, and I think I did most of these.
All right, but you know, try to get them as flat as possible so they look good, right? This one I may actually have to make bigger because the splines seem like they're a little too thin. I don't think a T, you know, set of T's is going to even fit in that area, so I'll probably end up having to redo them. ladies tees okay but you know so that's what I'll normally do is go around and make sure that all the tee boxes are good and but I'm not going to do all the tee boxes you know on the video so next thing I'll do is you know right now this is all rough all right that's why I have no secondary you know, like a fringe and then the rough. Now it's heavy rough to rough to fairway. All right. So where you would normally have just a line of rough and then heavy rough, this is going directly from fairway to the normal rough to a heavy rough. All right. So that's why there's no secondary. You can't. Uh, it's not. It's not possible to do a secondary uh, rough in there. Okay. So with that in mind here, um, what I'll do again, when you create these waypoints in open street and I'll show you what I mean. So when you create these holes, if it'll ever zoom down. There we go. So when you create these, this spline point is where it's going to line up here. All right. But since you don't really have a yardage in open street, you're just guessing, right? So I always complain about people that don't have the waypoints set properly because if they're not proper, you end up with a six iron or something like that because this waypoint is off. So I normally set these waypoints uh, like 290. Okay. Set that thing there. And then I'll just go around to the different holes. Now, when you spline, you'll notice that all the par threes have the spline point in the middle all right which is not right so that's how you would end up with a messed up yardage on your cards for the yardage of the green or the course and you'll get the wrong club so you always have to move par threes over so they line up somewhere on the green all right Again, par threes here. You can see some more trees in the fairway that it, you know, put in there. All right. More stuff that I have to clean up, but we're going to worry about this waypoint first. And again, it was out at 370 for the drive, which is not right. So it should be about 290 around there. All right. Then we got these trees. All right. So I'll just end up doing a multi-select to select this one and this one. Delete them. Okay. This, you know, again, is this tree supposed to be there? I don't know. So what we can do is take a look at uh blue golf and look at hole number what what were we on hole number three so let's take a look at that hole number three all right is there a tree over near the bunker doesn't look like it to me all right so 
we're going to get rid of this tree. Okay. And you can see that I put the rough around the fairway bunkers. Okay. And sometimes they'll get a little sloppy. All right. So I try to line them up. This one actually doesn't look too bad. All right. Except for that one little edge there. And what that is, is where I joined the rough from over here to bring a line up and around and back down. So you can't extend the rough any longer further into the fairway because fairway takes a precedence over the rough, right? So we have to end up uh, bringing the fairway in. To get rid of that little bump. And if you go too far, you can always back it out. But, you know, I tried, you know, like that's too much. So I'll just undo that. You know, and it's just going to take some tweaking. I cannot stand when it does that. It just randomly moves it. All right. Um, So I try to get it lined up as much as possible. That doesn't look too bad. All right. I mean, you're never going to get it. Well, I shouldn't say never. You want to spend hours doing your splines? That's fine. All right. But I try to get it lined up so it looks pretty decent. All right. So the, like, there's no jagged edges. Um, you know, here again with this funky edges, you know, the edges here that LIDAR brings in, I normally just get rid of that. Um, and we actually have now a real curve the way it's supposed to be. Same, this one doesn't look bad. Okay, it's pretty clean. It's going around. So that one I'm not even going to touch. Um, so that looks pretty decent. All right. Uh, so the bunkers, they look pretty good. I mean, what I'll end up doing is take my fuzzy brush, make this pretty small. And raise this up, oh, maybe a foot. And just go around here. Okay, so a foot high will now, you know, it'll bring it down a little bit. But more importantly, it'll smooth it out so it looks really good. Okay. Okay. And I'll end up doing that on every single bunker on the course. All right, just so, you know, it's nice and smooth. Um, and sometimes when you bring in the, you know, the bunkers, you know, it may not go all the way out. Hey, Texan, what's up? Hey, Vlad. What's going on, guys? So, yeah, this this looks pretty good. It came in pretty well. Um, so I don't think I'm going to screw with it too much. I guess I could if I chose to go in here and uh, sculpt. Or not, I'm going to sculpt land. Add surface bunker brush. 
Um, I don't know. Let's pick that one. Make this uh, really small. And spin it. And maybe, you know, extend it up. And sculpt that bad boy. Again, I keep it like a foot, so it takes it a little further down. But more importantly, it smooths it out. Okay. And I'll end up doing this on all the bunkers. So it's not making it too deep. It's just mainly smoothing it out so it looks really good. All right. So after I do all my bunkers um, and I make sure that my fairway bunker, the, the rough around, it's pretty even. I'll look at the fairways and especially like this, when you have the heavy or the heavy rough, then the regular rough and it's huge, which is the way this course is. Um, it sticks out like a sore thumb if you have screw ups in the splines. All right. <clears throat> so like this, you know, I think this, unfortunately, and it is, um, because I had to create this rough around here, I had to bring a line out here around the bunker and back down. And you end up with a flaw like this. Okay. And you can see the one that's pointing this way, which sucks, but it's, it is what it is. Okay. So we do have to clean that up to make it look good. So... All you can do with this type of thing is experiment. So six, move, and just move it a little bit and see what it does. And move that one a little bit. Let's try this one. Move this. You can see how big this spline is. This is the one that's going all the way out to the bunker. That was the line that I originally made. Okay. So we're getting there. Thanks, Vlad. Yeah, it's... It's getting there. So, yeah, and especially when you have this... Uh, there's no secondary even though this is all secondary, um, it sticks out really, really badly um, when you have flaws with your edge going around here. So let's see if we can get this thing. Pretty straight down here. There we go. Okay. So it's just a lot of trial and error. If you hit the wrong spline and you screw it up worse, you can always undo it. But that's nice and smooth now. Okay. So I'll just go around and make sure that I don't have any like that one. Um, you know, that everything's pretty smooth. All right. The way it should be. Okay. Okay. Another thing you can do is highlight the fairway and go in there and edit and do a sharpen and smooth and then do a smooth path. And what it'll do is go around the entire fairway and clean up as what it feels is clean. OK, so if you have any mini flaws, you know, it'll take care of it automatically. The same with the greens. I always go around to every hole. And you can always tell when I used it. Because notice how there's no spline points on each side. 
once I do that and edit and smooth and smooth the path, see how it extends. Now I have the spline points all the way around now. And if I chose to, I could adjust these now accordingly. So, <clears throat> um, and the other thing I always stress when designing is what? Change this. And set this to 1, 8.5. So the greens are lightning quick and very hard. So what that does is it brings out the most extreme breaks on your greens. So when you place your pins, you're not sitting in on, you know, you're not sitting on an illegal area, right? So we can go around like this one's good. I can see it. You know, it's, this is a pretty tame green. Um, if we go to hole one, all right, this one's a little quicker, but again, the nine zone here is pretty clean. There's nothing to really be concerned about with that pin, you know, and I have to go around each hole and look, this is illegal, all right? So this one's no good. So I've got to move this pin and put it in an area that does not have yellow around the nine squares. So that looks to be about good right there. Okay. So that's why I do the hard and fast and very firm because after you do this and you have your pins legal on hard and fast, they're gonna be legal for any speeds below that, right? So if you if this is too fast for you guys, I love it myself, but um, you can always slow the speed down and publish it, okay? And um, what the hell is that? Oh, I must have must have missed a spot. Interesting. All right. Yeah, you can tell this is where I brought the line up and around the bunker and back down. Well, obviously, there was another spot that was too wide between the two spline lines, and it put rough in the middle of the fairway. So th that I've never done before. So let's see if we can actually get rid of that. I guess I could try. Whoops, I don't want a green. I want a fairway. I could try a brush and let's see if we can brush over that rough. Yep. Cool. All right. So that takes care of that flaw. And what causes that is when you do the splining, what hole was that? That was hole three. So if we go back to three, on open street. I got it slow tonight. All right. That's one, two, three. All right. So let's see what I did wrong. I don't see what I did wrong, really. So here's my line. That is not, there's no gap there. So I don't know what the hell it's doing, why it created that gap. Don't have a clue. So anyway, we fixed it, right? So it doesn't matter. Now, what's not fixed, eh, that doesn't look too bad, I guess. I guess I could try to, See if we can bring that out a little bit. Yeah, it's better. 
try to keep it consistent going around. I mean, this is big, but that's just the way it is on the course. But I could clean these up. And again, if you go out too far, undo it and redo it. All right. Like I'm going to undo that. And let's try it again. I can't stand it when you hit edit and move. It just randomly takes the thing instead of keeping it where it should be. It just it just throws it out there. All right, so that's much cleaner. That looks pretty good. All right, so we've got a good legal pin on this one. And the bunkers look pretty good. But I will go through with that brush and and actually clean them up. Even if they don't need clean, I clean them up again. The greens, um, you know, when you pull in LIDAR, it's it can be iffy. Now, I have, I have messed around with the spinning of the course to get the LIDAR data pretty well lined up. So it's it's pretty accurate, um, you know, and you take some time. And again, I've got another video that shows you how to do that stuff. But, um, you know, so once we look at the fairway to make sure that the splines are pretty smooth, all right, the bunkers, you know, make sure, again, I run it. Use my favorite brush there. It's raised about a foot, and I try to keep it inside the bunker, not outside. So this will sink it down just a tad, but more importantly, it'll smooth it out. So it's really nice inside there. Okay. Um, Another big thing is, is cart paths, right? If you're going to have cart paths anywhere, they better be flat. There's nothing, you know, as far as me looking, you know, they need to be flat. So what I'll do, this one looks to be pretty good out of the box. But since I have this macro that I use, um, What I'll do is, and I'll tell you, it looks pretty damn good right out of the box. But if you spline everything correctly, it'll look good, you know, if you have it lined up. You know, now that is a little iffy, this hill here, so I'm going to fix that. Uh, I will use this brush, and I'll make it. Just a little bit wider than the cart, cart path itself. And when you have a really steep hill like this, you got to be careful. Because you can really screw it up. And again, you can always go back and redo it. So first thing I'm going to try is going through there. All right. And it's smooth. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it's steep, but that's okay. And if you end up with lumps like this, you know, you've got to just take your other fuzzy brush, this one, and, oh man, no wonder it was raised up. I had still had it as a foot. Oh boy. All right, so let's undo that. Okay. I'm like, what the hell's going on? All right. So, again, we can use this brush. Now it's set for zero is 
what I should have had the entire time. All right, now it's smooth there. You know, and they, it really doesn't look that bad. But one thing's for certain, you know, with the macro that I have for my mouse, it's not going to take me long to just go through the entire course and make sure that those cart paths are flat. Right. So they look pretty damn good. So I will end up, you know, going through the entire course and cleaning it up. Now, I don't know what this is. I don't know why that's there. There's really no need for it. I don't know why there's so many splines in this area here. So I'll end up deleting this. See if we can't get this straightened out here. And worse comes to worse, I end up deleting the whole area right there and redoing it. Yeah, you know, I don't know why there's so many splines here. And that's fine. So I'm going to get rid of this area. And I'm going to recreate it. So I'm just going to put some uh, surface. We're going to put our path, our splines. And I just make sure I'm back far enough. And then I'm perfectly centered. And make sure you're far enough back. And I need to check the thickness of this, which is what? This is two yards. I always I always bring the the uh, cart paths in to one point seven. To me, 2.0 is too too wide. Yeah, that's 2.5. All right. And it looks better already. We've got this one spot here. Let's see if we can get rid of that flaw there just by changing the width that looks pretty decent okay so again we're just going to clean that up i'll just go around the entire course and run it over all the cart path to make sure that it's good even though this does look pretty damn good okay now as with any lidar data you can see the lidar that was brought in and then you ended up with an area around the entire map that is not lidar data all right so You've got to use your own discretion. I raised this up here. All right. So it's a little bit lower. All right. Because I'm going to end up. Um, if you look at the real course, there are trees over here. All right. So if you have this down at this level here and put trees in, you're not even going to see the trees. So you just have to raise this area up and 
you know, create your trees. And I will use multi plant. You can see how much meter I have. Okay. So I have a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff I can uh, use. So again, with my multi plant button here, I'll just put these all over the place. change them around and since it's multi-plant it is doing the rotation for me which is nice and really what these trees are for is just to hide the background okay oh my god what's this thing doing Okay, and I could actually raise that up even more, this ground here. So let's see, let's raise it up another 19 feet. Because the goal of this, these trees is to, you know, hide it. So when you're playing... You know, you don't see the dead zone over there, right? Hey, Bill, what's going on, man? So I'm going to raise this area up around here. So when you're down on the golf course, you see those trees and make it look like it's, you know, you don't see this crappy area back here. So when you're looking from the course, you're going to see nothing but trees okay I'll put some there you and me both brother that's what I'm doing man I'm just All right, so so now when we're looking down on the course, I shouldn't even see, you know, I'm not going to see that dead zone over here, right? So I got to raise the ground up a high enough so it comes into view, okay? Because there's, there's like no trees on this course, but there are trees around it. Um, so, again, I'll have to raise this area up over here. Hopefully without touching the course over there. All right. So I like to have the back of it a little higher than the front. Because when I put my trees in, they won't be all at the same level. And the same with over here. Just got to be careful, though, that you don't you know, accidentally hit over here and then you're screwing your course up. Yeah. 
you know, so that's the gist of it. I mean, we're going to end up, you know, increasing this. So it's pretty much the same height as over here. So we see it. So when you're standing on this green, you're going to see some trees over here and we're going to, you know, you're not going to see all this dead area over here. So there'll be trees blocking it, but you'll still be able to see the top of the mountains, right? So, and the other thing I'll probably end up doing is exactly this. I mean, I'm going to create a beach. Uh, so when I look at this, you know, if I'm standing on this green, it would be cool to see a beach, right? But it's going to have to be out far enough that I actually see it from the course. So I might be standing here on this on this green, and I want to be able to see the shoreline. So I'll end up, you know, putting this. My God, what do I owe the pleasure for? The designer master himself. The only difference is I'm not I'm not designing, man. I'm only doing LIDAR stuff. That's too high. So I don't know. Am I going to be able to see that from from here? Yeah. So I'll be able to see that from there. Whoops. Just curious. Man, is this thing running slow? Okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to test something. If Andre could come over and uh, show me how to do a, a quality beach.
Do it again, Kent. Come on. And I guess I could just, uh, I don't know, will that cover that? Yeah. Yeah, I can see the beach. All right, cool. So, again, I'll just have to tweak that. Um, so what else? Cart paths, splines, making sure they're clean on these holes. Like there's just too many splines here. You can see just by deleting the splines, it cleans up the corners. And especially when you have that that rough right against the fairway, it sticks out, especially with a dark theme like I have here. So if it doesn't, if it's not good, it'll show up really quick. So I think that's it, guys. So, yeah, I mean, the, the greens are going to be a huge thing. Um, like this one <clears throat> may need some sculpting because I don't think I'm going to have four, four pins, four legal pins. Looks like I've got one there. Maybe there. That's two. <coughs> Maybe there, it's three, that's pretty cruel. And then last, yeah, there's no, there's not a fourth one. 
So in that case, like this green, I would have to sculpt it. And smooth something out somewhere. Hey, Vegas, welcome, man. Um, so this one, it just, you know, it hardened fast and firm. I've got to get four pin placements on here, right? And right now, the way this is sitting, there's just no way I'm getting four pins. So I'm going to have to do some sculpting. So, and what I found out is when you when you sculpt something at zero, zero, it flattens it, but it pushes those that break down. Okay. So by keeping it at zero, zero, you know, it's still breaking, you know, that's an extreme break right there still. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to push these red lines down here. And you'll see them move. Okay, so now it's green here. The red is now down here. So I'm just going to go slowly down. And it's still, you know, moving at a good clip. So I'm not taking out all the break. It's keeping the contour of the green. Okay. And we still want to leave a false front but it doesn't have to be red, all right? Because red is just going to roll off. All right, so this is hard and fast. Okay, so now I think I have... Four places I can put a pin, and you can always find out by just choosing this and moving it around, and it'll show you the entire course, or the green, okay? So let's see. We've got one flat spot here. That's one pin. Two pins up here. One where it's at now. That's three. And we need a fourth. And... That's really cutting it close because we want those nine squares, right? And that's not going to cut it. That, if we put it there, all right, and we look at it, there's still yellow behind it. So I'm still going to have to flatten this sucker a little bit. And I'm going to make this circle much smaller because now we're going to fine tune it, right? We're just trying to get rid of this yellow right here. And I could theoretically stop right now because that nine squares, there's no yellow. All right, but yet it's still quick as hell. Um, so if we look there, there's three by three square, right? Has to be legal. And we're good. All right, so yeah, there's yellow right here. A lot of it, but that's got nothing to do with around the pin. All right, it's fine to put it, you know, because if you go past the hole and you hit it correctly, it's going to roll back down to it, right? So that's good. Yeah, it, it's so tough, lad. I mean, it's. There's a little better. And again, down here, I've got to hit this. But 
the good news is, and that's why I do it with the hard and fast and firm when I design the hole or the, you know, the speed of the greens and all that, because most people don't want very firm, very fast, hard and everything else. I love it myself, but if you choose, you can go ahead and lower the speeds, lower the firmness, and you're guaranteed that your greens are going to be legal. Guaranteed, because they're legal for hard, hard and fast and firm, right? So that's why I always design them hard and fast in mind. One, because I like it. And in real golf, those are the courses I play. They're very firm, very fast. They're 12, 13 on the stent, you know, for real golf. So that's what I'm used to playing. Um, so it is what it is. Everybody's preference, right? Here's one of those funky wraparounds here. All right. So I've got to get rid of this spline. That's better. All right. It's just when you pull in the LIDAR, it loves putting in these loop de loop um, edges around the anything. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, looks pretty good. So I'll continue to work on this and hopefully get, I don't know, maybe I'll get it published this weekend if I uh, finish it up. But yeah, I'll have to work on this shoreline. And I think everything else is pretty decent. But that's what. All I wanted to do, man, uh, just go over it, you know, instead of going over other people's courses, critique my own, you know, like this, you know, any t anywhere I had to bring this in to create this rough around the, f the uh, stuff bugs me. There we go. So it's pretty uniform throughout. And this one, I don't know. Way too much. That's the thing. You just got to play with these things to get them right. not the right spline. That's the problem. I got this spline going up this way. That's what's causing this loop here. And all you can do is mess with them. Look at that. And you have to find the right spot, spline to mess with to get that, that thing out of there, if you can get it out of there. Um, now, another option, let me think. Another option you could do, and again, this is all because of this rough around there, you know. It looks much better than just having it in the fairway, but it requires extra effort to do that. And as a result of that, you get this crap. So I think what I can do here, fairway takes precedence over rough. So what I can do is add fairway, a brush. I'm going to try it at least.
and see if this works. Um, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Just the opposite. Yeah, that looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so let's try spinning that the other way. And just enough to clean up. No, that's not. Oh, there it is. All right, so you can put, you can paint fairway in there just to clean it up. Clean up that edge. But, all right, so that looks better. Okay. That really needs to be how big is that thing? That's better. So, yeah, I've got a lot of work to do. I've got to go through all these bunkers, smooth them out, do the fairways, put a clubhouse in. You can see how I love it, how it puts trees instead of the fair, the uh, clubhouse. So. Let's do a moldy select. Now let's make this bigger, shall we? Get rid of them. We can always put no ones in if there really is an, a tree there. And that will be found out by going here. And taking a look at where the clubhouse is. And there's a couple trees around the clubhouse here, and that's pretty much it. Just some stray trees, a couple in here. But not too many in this course. And there's really, there's no water except for this one pond here. Which, you know, that's one thing I can do real quick, and then I'm going to call it a night. Where is that pond? It is somewhere over here. There's the clubhouse. There it is. So I don't think that belongs there. Goodbye. So you can see I splined out the water, which comes in as mulch. So I can just, gives me an idea of how big that water should be. It's pretty damn flat. So I'll just hide it a little bit, make sure it doesn't stick up anywhere, which it doesn't. And then I'm just going to make this sucker huge. Do a Q for advanced edit so I can resize this the way I want it. And it's just below the surface of the ground. 
So I should be able to easily go in here now and flatten this bad boy. You can see it's already showing up and it's only eight inches. So we'll sink it down about four and a half feet and go to town. And you can see I'm staying away from the edge with the center to keep it a somewhat consistent area there. So it looks like the shape that it's supposed to be. And that's it. And there's perfect plane of water. And that's the only water on the course. Ariel Adam. Who is that? It rings a bell. Is that the fantasy course design guy? Yeah, so I'm going to work on my first shoreline here. I mean, I guess if we play this hole, let's see, let's play hole 11 and see what that beach looks like. It might be too big, too small. I don't know. So let's play this hole. I'm really depressed. They actually are stopping the production of the steam controller. They have stopped it. So I will no longer have if this steam controller goes. So does my game. Oh, that's ugly. No, actually, it'll work out perfect. All right, so the shoreline I can see from there. Let's see how big it is when I get down there. And again, you can see that loop-de-loop -loop right there. But that's not why I'm playing this. I want to see. All right, so I can see the shoreline. And that pin is illegal. All right, so we've had enough of this. This is which hole now? This, I believe, was 11. Okay. So let's edit that. So 11. It had the funky loop-de-loop -loop here. Have to get rid of this. It's better. If I screw up, I can always put it back in. Uh, that looks better. But why is that crunched in? All right, so that was total fail. That's a thing. You never know until you move these frickin' splines. I don't see another spline other than that one. Oh, there's one. The hell is that? All right, this is getting better. There 
we go. All right. Still screwed up, though. How the hell am I going to get rid of that? Six, three, one. I can't get rid of that. Where is my six two sharper and smooth? Hey, D Dog. Yeah, I mean, yeah, these came in. I don't know if you're aware of it, but this is a LIDAR course, and the splines are always screwed up. But you're saying put a secondary. I know of no way, like, I've got, um, where is it? So most of the course is like this. You know, where I have a ton of rough, the light rough around the hole, and then the, obviously the heavy rough. What I was trying to figure out is, is there a way you're saying you can put a secondary over here around the green? So, are you talking about this, what? The second surface? Yeah, this is a green spline point here. So, you're talking about the, uh, this? Let's see, and make it what, rough? There we go. Okay. Okay, I got you. So you can actually, yeah, because most of the course is like that. Yeah, you know, like this. But that hole, for some reason, is not like it. Like most of these are like this, you know. But no, that's good to know. So if it doesn't have that normal rough around the entire green going all the way down, this one's just a normal connection. Okay, cool. Thank you, sir. All right, so, yeah, I've got a lot of work to do. Tried my best to spline it correctly. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? This here? Well, it was funny because I, you know, the only course I did that 
is Oakmont. I didn't have any any light rough anywhere on the course. And Fritz, you know, smacked my hand. And I'm like, dude, there is no light rough at Oakmont. You know, it's all, it just goes from fairway to, you know, one little area of regular, you know, the fringe around the fairway and that's it. And then you got major freaking rough. So, but this one, uh, where is it? You know, it's just got, I just classified all this as light rough. And then this was the heavy rough. So that's how I gauged it in open street. Just ended up, you know, splining it out like that. But, I mean, it's a good course. It's a nice course. Looks good. Um, you know. So, I haven't done a course in probably six months. You know? So... Has it been that long? Probably. Probably about six months. I was putting one out at what? Um, every three weeks? Everybody's like, dude, you can't do a course like that. You can't do one that quick. Uh, well, yeah, I can. And I'm just looking at that. What is this? Oh, this is the driving range. And I can see already I missed some bunkers here. But it's a freaking driving range. All right. Now I could follow my own advice and, uh, you know, separate the terrain, go back and open street, create these and import them in. I don't know if I'll do that or not, but now I could try splines. Oh, come on, bitch. God, what a pain in the butt. Six. Fill the spline, damn it. Beautiful. Vlad, have a good one, man. Thanks for stopping in, man. Yeah, my God, what is it? Two o'clock in the morning over there? God bless you guys. 9.30, I'm going, oh, man, I got to get to bed. You guys are uh, up until, uh, must be a U, the UK blood or something. All right, man, take it easy. Pretty good job there. All right. All right. I've had enough fun for one night. Yeah, D-Dog. Have you done any courses recently? I know you did Cypress, right? Yeah. Have you done any since then? Or you say uh, enough's enough? On the fifth fantasy course or LIDAR, or what'd you do?
McDanny, what's up, man? Just a course. Okay, so you did a uh, fantasy one? Humboldt Red Skunk Acres. Sweet. Now that's interesting. That's a shape. That's real interesting. How the hell did a shape? How did these get in here? How the hell did shapes get in my course? I don't think there's bunkers there. That's interesting. So what is that? 16... Sixteen has no frickin' bunkers. How the hell did those bunkers get in there? That is weird. Okay. That is really strange. This is weird. I have no clue how this frick, how these bunkers got there. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, man. Take it easy, D-Dog, and I'm going to call tonight myself. But, yeah, I just wanted to go over and uh, critique some of my own course and uh, show people what I need to do to get this thing in, in good shape. So, until next time, have a great night, guys. Take it easy.